Okay, the next example I have for you is a system of three equations with three variables represented by the first augmented matrix. And we've been given the seven row operations necessary to transform the original augmented matrix into its most reduced form so that we can identify the answer. So as you can see by the layout of this problem, I've only left the blanks where necessary. And technically, this third set, uh, row one and row three, will change. So I'm just going to make some blanks underneath those. So um, the first step in Gauss-Jordan elimination is to start at row one, column one, and make that entry entry into a one, which we already have a one there, so that's fantastic. Now we need to change the rest of the values in that column into zeros. And we had discussed this before. Let's see if I could get these notes on here. When you need to change a number into a zero, take the opposite of that number and multiply it by the row that has a negative one in the same column as the changing number and add the product to the row that needs to change. So when we look here at this 3, we know this needs to be a 0, and we ask ourselves, what's the opposite of 3? It's negative 3. And we need to multiply that by the row that has a 1 in the same column. So negative 3, let's see if I could squeeze it, negative 3 needs to be multiplied by the row 1 values. So I'm going to put those products right here, negative 3, negative 9, negative 3, and negative 9. So now I have these two values that get added together to replace row 2. Remember the changing row is written first. Row 2 changes by adding it to negative 3 times row 1. Well I've already performed the negative 3 times row 1 and now I'm going to add these four pairs of numbers. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0 negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1, negative 3 plus 3 again is 0, and negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2. Now, if you'll note, I put a comma separating these two row operations here because, first of all, the software I used would not allow me to write the second row operation underneath here, which is what I would typically do. And the reason why I'm combining two row operations here is so that I don't have to copy this row 3 over here and start with a this row 3 minus 2 times row 1 row operation. It's just going to save me a little bit of writing if you don't mind. So I know that this 2 needs to become a 0. So the opposite of 2 is negative 2. So negative 2 needs to be multiplied by the row that contains a 1 in the same column. So I'm going to multiply negative 2 times the row 1 values. And I'm going to squeeze those in here. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times 1 again, negative 2. And negative 2 times 3 again, negative 6. So now I have these two sets of values that I have to add together and replace row 3 because in this row operation, row 3 is the changing row. It gets changed by adding negative 2 times row 1. Well, I've already written the negative 2 times row 1 values in here in green. So now I just need to add these. Negative 2 and 2 is 0. Negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, and negative 6 plus 10 is negative 16. So, my first column is done. I have my leading 1, and the rest of the entries in that column are zeros. So, I'm going to move to row 2, column 2, as I move down the principal diagonal. And I know that this negative 1 here needs to be a 1. So to change the sign of a number, all that is required is that we multiply by negative 1. And so that's what's represented here. We have negative 1 times row 2, which is the same as negative row 2. So when I multiply by negative 1 here, 
all that happens is that the signs change. So, 0 stays the same, but negative 1 becomes a positive 1. 0 stays the same, and negative 2 becomes a positive 2. So, first column done, move down the principal diagonal, that's a 1. Now I need to make the 3 and the 9 into zeros, and I've given you the row operations, and we've discussed this before. To change a non-zero entry or a number into a zero, I need to take the opposite of that number and multiply it by the row that has a 1 in the same column as the number that needs to change. So row 2 needs to be multiplied here by negative 3. So when I multiply negative 3 times the row 2 values, I'm actually going to write it just above here because I know that I'm going to need to combine these products with row 1. So negative 3 times 0 is 0, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. So now I have these two sets of values that I need to add together to replace the row 1 values that are over here. Row 1 is the changing row. It gets changed by adding it to negative 3 times row 2. I wrote in negative 3 times row 2 values here in blue. So we just combine. 1 plus 0 is 1. 3 minus 3 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. And 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So I got this 3 to turn into a 0 by using this row operation right here. Row 1 minus 3 times row 2. <clears throat> so I told you we also need to change that negative 9 into a 0. Once again, to change a number into a 0, I take the opposite of that number, which is 9, the opposite of negative 9 is 9, and I need to multiply it by the row containing a 1 in the same column. So row 2 needs to be multiplied by 9 here, and that's what's represented in this row operation. Row 3 changes by adding it to 9 times row 2. So I'm going to put the product of 9 times row 2 right here. 9 times 0 is 0, 9 times 1 is 9, 0 again, and 18. So now I have these two sets of values that I need to add together for my new row 3 values. So 0 plus 0 is 0, 9 minus 9 is 0, which achieved my objective of changing this negative 9 into a 0. 0 minus 1 is minus 1, and 18 minus 16 is 2. So I have a couple more things left to do. As I move down my principal diagonal, this negative 1 needs to be a positive 1, and this 1 needs to be a 0. And typically I would work on this negative 1 and change it into a 1 first, but because I see that these two values are opposites. I'm going to add row 1 to row 3 first. Now, this might not look like it is exactly one of the row operations I discussed, but it is. It's times row plus, and we can view this as row 1 plus 1 times row 3. So, when we add rows 1 and 3, 1 plus 0 gives us 1. 0 plus 0 gives us 0. 1 minus 1 gives us 0, which is what we wanted. We wanted this 1 to change into a 0. And finally, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So the last thing that needs to change is that this negative 1 needs to be a 1. So we change the sign by multiplying the entire row by a negative 1, which is represented after the comma with this row operation right here negative 1 times row 3. So all that does is change the values. The zeros stay the same, but the negative 1 becomes a positive 1, and the positive 2 becomes a negative 2. Now, this augmented matrix is in reduced row echelon form. So I can identify the solution as negative 1, 2, negative 2.